Hello and welcome to Apotheosis the Hellenistic Age. This is a total conversion mod for Crusader Kings 3, which is set after the fall of Alexander the Great. Greece is separated into a bunch of city-states, and it's a perfect opportunity for a little bit of conflict, a little bit of politics, and it's going to be cool to see what new ideas they have in here, because there are some new mechanics and some entirely new systems that I want to get my teeth into and basically figure out what's going on. Now, before we jump in, it's time to read the history of our character we're going to be playing. We're going to be playing, effectively, the successor of Sparta. So we're going to be trying to bring back some old glory and trying to, you know, restore some lost lands. So, let's start with the Fetters of Greece. Ever since the passing of Alexander the Great, the lands of Greece have been the scene of constant battles between the successors. However, with the kings of Macedonia and Epirus uh, engaged elsewhere, recently the free cities have been able to breathe a sigh of relief. Their relief, however, is not to last long. Both kings have turned their gaze southward once more and, unless the fortress of, or fortresses of Corinth Chalice and Demetrius can be liberated, the Greek cities will inevitably remain at the mercy of their powerful northern neighbours. The lands of Greece are waiting to be united once more. Will the new hegemon be an ambitious king, a league of free cities, or a single great city-state? I will take this moment to apologise for all pronunciation of Greek names. I will no doubt get them wrong, but if you correct me, I will try and get them uh, correct in the future. Right, now on to our specific character, Basilius um, Areus. The latest in a long line of Aegead kings, Areus has inherited a Sparta vastly different from the realm which won eternal glory at the Mopoli. Her ancient traditions are fading, her armies weakening, and her population dwindling. It would take a leader of great strength and courage to halt this decline, and Areus certainly isn't afraid to try. However, he has already learned from his campaigns in uh, Focus that the other Greek cities are wary of a Spartan re resurgence and won't easily be fooled into thinking otherwise. His efforts will ultimately fail as he dies in battle under the walls of Corinth, and the city of Sparta is doomed to fall only 40 years later. With shrewd rule and good fortune, can Sparta's decline be delayed or even undone altogether? So, should be a fun thing. In history, our character loses, but it's our chance to change some of that. So let's jump in. Right, so this is the map, and you can see at the top here that we have three very powerful northern neighbours. We have Aperios, we have Macedonia, and we have Asia here. So, basically, um, those are going to be the three that are going to come down against us and we have to fight off. We are right down here at the bottom, so we've got a lot of time and a lot of things for them to get through before they get to us. And right next to us we have a lot of small city-states, so my first objective is probably going to be to swallow them up and try and get ourselves to a point where we have a reasonable army to fight these guys off. What's the difference right now? We got 1.6, they got 5,000, 10,000, 11,000. So yeah, we got quite a lot of... Um, power to build up before we're actually at their level. We're almost at these guys level but we're not quite. So there's a lot of stuff to do. Um, in saying that we also have some new ways to do it. So if we have a look at ourselves here we have a different government type. In fact this is a unique government type uh, to the city state of Sparta. So we can create cadet branches. We have extra prowess just for being this government type, which is quite nice, and it does lower our domain limit. So we're probably going to have to rely on um, some of our vassals once we get a little bit stronger and a little bit larger in terms of the amount of land that we're controlling. We can't centralize our power that well. Um, the Retra is a special form of government representing the unique constitution that governed the city-state of Sparta. It makes use of prestige rather than gold to hire men at arms and has access to special city-state policies and issues. So policies and issues are a new mechanic for the mod. If we head over here, we'll see that we have this new bit here. Now, policies, I am assuming, are going to be like things over time. So, um, they're going to be effects that you apply for, you know, 10 years, 20 years or whatever. And it's going to give you some active effect. And issues and emergencies are things that you just have to deal with. You're, there's also a corruption mechanic, which gives you different buffs and debuffs de depending upon the level of the corruption. So, right now we're at moderate, which makes our vassals dislike us slightly and give less le levy contribution, but also increases our development growth and gives us a bit of popular opinion with the people. So, 
this is going to be interesting to see how it changes at different levels, and also there's probably going to be a balancing act for the exact level of corruption you want. There's also a desired franchise thing here, which just says what the people want the government type to be, which luckily is the government type that we have right now, so no problems. If we have a look in here at our decisions, we have some new decisions as well, which is going to be um, kind of what guides us in a playthrough. We have consolidate the Lacedaemon here, which is um, basically getting us our kingdom. So we become the Basilia of this land right there. So to get it, we have to completely control all of the land that is within these borders, which we, I think, do right now, although it says that we don't. So uh, there might be one thing in here that we haven't quite got, or there might be, you know, it might just not update until we unpause the game. We have to get all of... Bessania over here, which is, um, actually I want to close that one, which is this land right there, so it's our neighbor's land. We have to get all of Megalopolis, which again is our neighbor's land, although it's underneath uh, Arcadia here. We also need to get, um, what's that, Thyretus, um, which is this land right there. So basically three of our neighbors all have a tiny bit of land that we need so we basically just want to go and attack them and take that land that's step number one it gets us our kingdom and after we've got a kingdom we can start getting these people as some of our vassals potentially so that's all good reforming the peloponnesian league is basically another way to getting ourselves a kingdom and we don't want to do this because we're already getting a kingdom from the first one so we're just going to ignore that one entirely in fact i'm going to even unnotify it there just so we remember we're not doing that one and then we have something a little bit different. Honor the laws of Lycorgos. So this one allows us to change um, our religion. So we would convert ourselves to Tindaridism, which is uh, a return to the old ways of Spartans. That is extreme um, conservatism, coupled with distaste for personal wealth, an obsession with personal discipline, and of course, an irreconcilable desire to enslave Messenia. So... I, our neighbors i assume so this one basically turns us back into the old ways of spartans which gives us some bonuses gives us spartan fervor so we're getting the people going and it's basically our way of changing religion now um we to do this we need to have a level of fame which is higher currently our level of fame is two levels lower so we're at fame level one we need to be at fame level three and it's the exact same for our religious side of it. We need to be at religious level 3 and we're at religious level 1. So this bit we're quite far away from. We also need to have a trait of theologian or administrator, which is within our lifestyle traits. So I'm, what I'm assuming this is, is we either have to be interested in religion or we have to be interested in reorganizing the realm. So that's kind of the limiter there. So we might want to work towards one of those two. We also need a thousand piety as a base level as well. So there's a lot in this which seems like we might need to wait, you know, maybe even a generation to do it. But this is also like a sub goal. So this is kind of goal number one. This is goal number two that we'll keep in the background. So um, working on some other stuff that we got here, uh, we've got um, a Basilius here, which is a new role in our council. Um, which I assume will feed into our policies and decisions um, down here. We also have some empty stuff in our council we're going to need to fill in, which is just standard CK3 fare. Um, we do have a new men at arms uh, unit here, which has a type of phalanx. So new, new men at arms. It doesn't counter anything and it's bad in all like different terrain. So they're pretty much only good on like, you know, planes maybe? I don't know. Um, maybe there's some types of terrain that aren't in there. Um, yeah, uh, hills are probably fine. If we've got something that's just hills, they don't get a negative effect, but they don't get a positive effect anywhere. Are they cheap? Is that the reason why? They are pretty good. So 33 damage, 28 toughness. Let's have a look here. Compare them to like the pikemen, right? 22, 24 uh, for 100. Uh, 33, 28 for 100. Um, they're pretty much, you know, one to one to one. But these guys, I think, are coming out with um, better numbers for the amount of prestige that we're spending. Yeah, so they're a little bit cheaper, but they don't counter anything. Yeah, so they're cheaper. F they're they're better value for. Um, I was gonna say for money, but for prestige. But yeah, again, don't counter anything. Bad in a lot of terrains, but they they'll get the job done. Okay, that's fine. 
Right, uh, let's start playing some Crusader Kings, huh? Work out what we need to do first. So first of all, we have the empty council position. So let's fill that one in. Need a spy master. Do we have somebody who likes us here? Uh, you would like us if you were my spy master, right? Or, oh, you're currently my chancellor, never mind. I was thinking because they're a powerful vassal, if we put them on our council, they would like us more, but um, they're already on our council, so they just don't like us. That's fair enough. Um, we could put you in here. You don't like us, though. I think we might have to recruit somebody if we want somebody good, or we could go for this person who's not very good. Let's go for the person who's not very good right now, just because I don't think anyone's going to be trying to kill us immediately, hopefully. Uh, we're going to switch you over to improving our vassal's opinion of us, because apparently our vassals don't like us very much. We already are organizing levies, so we get extra troops. And we have some taxes coming in, so that's all okay. We don't need to fabricate claims, because if I have a look over here, we have reasons to declare war. But what's request claim? So we can petition um, this person here. Oh, the Oracle at Delphi, we can petition, uh, petition to give us a claim on a title in exchange for piety. That's quite useful. But we do naturally just have some de jure reasons to declare war, so we might start with those. Right, um, other things. We need a lifestyle. We're currently in to do stewardship and we're almost at architect. It seems like it would probably be good to finish off. Architect's a good one. Gets you a lot of building time down, which is quite useful. Um, we don't have that much money, do we? No, but, and, you know, it might be okay. But also what we can do with that is we can maybe go down administrator, get to this one, which would then allow us to get the change of religion. That's an option. Yeah, yeah, and it would make our people like us more. This might be a good way to go right now, make people like us. Uh, we could also maybe do a focus on wealth to get a little bit of extra money, although we seem to have an okay time there. We could also go into this, make it less likely that people are going to um, cause us trouble. The one stewardship, I think, would put us at the point where we get an extra domain limit from it. So that's good. Um, yeah, I think we'll go with this. And then courtiers and guests also like us. Yeah, let's, let's go with that. Yeah, so that gives us an extra domain limit because we're at 15. It uh, means people are less likely to join schemes against us, which is good because our spy master sucks. Um, and people are going to like us, so they're less likely to want to kill us or do anything bad against us. Cool. So we'll start with that. Next up, heir is unmarried. Oh, we have an heir. Okay, that's cool. So we don't really have anything special going on with us. We're kind of okay at stewardship, and that's about it. We make extra money from our greedy, but yeah, that is about it. Our son... Good at fighting. Hey, there you go. He's good at fighting. He's comely. Okay, he's a little bit arrogant, but that's okay. Arrogant, brave. He seems like a good person to be leading us in what will likely be a time of war. Uh, let's find him a spouse first. So what are we looking for? Maybe an alliance could be good. Um, let's go by alliance power first. The most powerful alliance we get was with Topos of Samos, which is where... So you are, well, where, where exactly are you? Oh, you're all the way over there. Yeah, I don't really want an alliance with somebody across the water. That's not really going to work for me. All right, how about you? Right up the top there. Um, okay. So you're in one of our other, one of the other nations. How strong are you? Yeah, reasonably strong. It's going to take you a while to get down here. You got anybody who's near? I'm kind of looking for somebody in this pile. Ideally. You're really far away. Okay. Uh, I might give up soon. We don't find anybody who's got a really good alliance. Uh, this one's a little closer. This one's kind of what I'm talking about. How many men do you have? Okay. That's not too bad. We have to wait um, six years before we could potentially get children. But our son is 18. That, that seems fine. Yeah, we'll arrange that marriage. That's going to work out. Right, let's go with that. Right, next up. We can marry, I think. No, that's my son and heir. Wait, we can't marry? Are we already... Oh, it's just not popped up as a thing we need to worry about. Okay, well, we should marry as well. Um, now, do we have any other alliances in here that seem good? We could potentially marry there if we're not worried about getting more children, potentially. Um, how about you? You seem about the right age. Oh, I should really check. What's our succession law? 
Uh, succession law is primogenitor. Okay, oldest child inherits. Perfect. So we don't need to worry about succession uh, through having... We don't have to worry about having multiple children for succession, so that's fine. Uh, sort ourselves by alliance power again. Let's see if we got anybody else. Where are you? So you're up there. Uh, wait, what about you? Sorry, I, I know we just checked this person, but you're also up there. Uh, you, you might do, actually. Yeah, let's marry into this one. Let's see, was fine. We're not getting any genetic traits forward, but we will get an alliance, which might be useful. Right, we'll send a proposal. Right. Anything else that we need to do immediately? I don't think there is. I think I probably want to unpause for a little bit. And then potentially think about attacking these guys, uh, who are slightly weaker than us. But let's see. Cool. We got betrothal through. We got marriage through. Nice. Okay, so those two things are now done. Um, we have slightly less troops because it's recalculated based upon vassal opinions of us. Uh, you have the same number. So you have... You actually have quite a few more uh, men-at-arms than we do. A lot of ours are levies. Yeah, so you might actually be just as strong as us, really. Who else have we got? We, we potentially need to get some land off of you. Uh, you are a lot weaker than us. You seem like a good choice. Okay. Let's see. You're not allied to anybody. Um, you have less troops. Your troops are worse in general. They're just levies and then some light footmen, which is probably going to be fine. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Conquer Duchy. We can't do right now, but we could conquer County, which is the same thing. Yeah, we spend our prestige to do it, but... Yeah, this seems like a good one. Let's go to war. Right, we'll raise all of our troops, and let's get them going. So I'm just going to march them directly in there. I don't think we need to worry. We're going to win because we have more soldiers, which is generally the easiest way to win. Wedding celebration. With my marriage, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my rights to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless uh, to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. So we get 75 gold or prestige. Now prestige is very useful for us, because it's what allows us to declare wars, and it's what gives us men at arms. So I'm actually going to take prestige this time. I would usually take the gold, but that's pretty good. We call in our house member to war. Ooh, okay. Ah, we have a house member over there. Well, that's very useful to know that we can get 700 troops if we need it. I'm not going to call them in, but it's very useful to know that we could, and they're not that far away. Right. Ecstatic uh, peasantry. The peasants in the polis of Sparta are in a good mood. The harvest is bountiful, the roads are safe, and the village elders are telling nonsensical stories of cows producing honey-laden milk and geese laying golden eggs. The peasants are praising me for their fortune, and I have sent a delegation carrying gifts. Oh, and have sent a delegation carrying gifts. 20 gold. So, uh, we can collect more gifts, or we can get reinvestment in their county, which will cause us to be very stressed. I'm just going to take 20 gold, thanks. Oh, talk of that, what's our control like in our two holdings? Control is full. Well, that's fine then, we won't worry about it. We've won the battle, which also wiped all of their troops. Oh, it didn't wipe them. Oh, never mind. But yes, we... Oh, we don't have enough to siege? How many do we need? 1,600. Oh, no. It didn't even, it didn't even occur to me that we couldn't have enough to actually siege the land. Can I hire some mercenaries? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we probably can. That's fine. Just hire some mercenaries temporarily to let us actually siege this land. We are a little bit in debt, but, you know, that's okay. We, we needed to siege it. Five years on the siege? It's a little slow, really, for me. Two years? Okay, it's going a lot quicker than I thought it would. Factions are being created against us. Don't need to worry, we're about positive on gold now. There's a scheme at court. Time is moving rather quickly. <laughs> I just noticed there. Basilius has gained the trait pregnant. White piece, uh, decline. Why would I accept a white piece? I'm about to win. There we go. Stewardship perk available. We will take architect. It's the most sensible one to take. Gives us two stewardship, but also gives us um, a bunch of holding things down, which is nice, as in costs of holding things down. Right. We have a son. Fantastic. Uh, let's give him a good name. Yeah, that's fine. 
We have captured their uh, leader. Um, do they have? Uh, they do have two holdings here. We could potentially have t um, ransomed their leader back and siege this, but you know what? I'll just take the win. We'll just uh, enforce our demands. Nice. So this new land is ours. Uh, I'm going to send our uh, marshal over there to do an increased county control, so we get extra troops and money from of it. Uh, from it, we'll disband our troops right now. Uh, is this including our mercenaries in this in this amount? It isn't. Okay, so we actually have that many troops, not including mercenaries. That's fantastic. This one holding is great for us. Okay, cool. Uh, I like what's going on here. The mercenary contract's expiring in 57 days. Wait, does that mean that we did three years in that short amount of time? That's something to pay attention to, because, uh, yeah, the game will just go as fast as it allows you. And I guess on this map, it's just, there must not be that much going on. So, uh, just speeds off into the distance. Okay, cool. Um, right, so we have the land, we have a few more troops, and I think that this seems like a good point to end the episode. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like, comment, subscribing, all of that sort of stuff really helps the channel, helps the series grow, and um, it gets this video out to more people who will then also enjoy it and like and subscribe, and you see how the algorithm's going to benefit that. Anyway, I only say at the start of uh, the first episode of a series, um, so that's the last time you hear this little spiel from me. So... Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for some more of this. Goodbye!